Today is going to be about church restoration. And I know last week that Joe kind of covered the perspective of our, our identity too, right? And if you kind of understood that, you know, it talked about how we're a diverse group of people united by the cross of Christ for the purpose of enjoying God and growing as a family, right? And we live out this whole perspective of love, abide, and reveal. Now, that's in the, in the context of all of us being a family, being saved by the blood of Christ and him being the Lord of our life and Savior. But what happens when things go wrong? You ever been a part of something that's gone wrong? Are you guys a part of a family? <laughs> Absolutely, right? I mean, you know, everybody has problems in a family. How do we deal with those? This week, I was, I was playing with my son, and we were playing a game. And what I found was every time I started playing with him, he started changing the rules so he could win. <laughs> now, how do you think about that, right? Now, now I got to admit, when you're playing with your three-year-old son with a game, when he cheats, it's cute. But when you do it with older people, it's not so fun, right? And what I find is that that's sometimes how it is in church, what we find is that when we're a part of a family, when something starts to go wrong, we get disturbed. And so we find in Scripture that it's part of, it's part of our duty to share in the sanctification of God that is founded on Christ and administered through the Holy Spirit, right? But when sin starts to creep into the church and into our individual lives, what do you do? You ever ask that question? What do you guys do? I'm going to ask this out loud. Do you start, oh, Lord, I cast out that demon of criticism? Or do you start praying? Is it really a perspective of do you look to find reconciliation and restoration? Because I want you to think about this. What if the whole world disregarded the rules? I could drive 120 miles an hour on the freeway and probably get in an accident. What if there was no jails? What if there was no driving rules? What if you went to go reprimand your kids and you didn't? Instead, there was no restrictions, no spankings, no timeouts, no nothing. You know what my house would look like? A pigsty. <laughs> my kids' rooms would be full of toys all over the place. My wife would be like, I can't stand you. I'd probably sleep on the couch more often than not. But my point is, is that there's a set of guidelines, right? And in the church of Christ, in the family of God, we have to see that there's guidelines for that restoration that, that, that needs to take place when we screw up. But not just when we screw up, when we're not willing to look and say, I have a problem. Do you hear what I mean? Because there's one, one way or another, we're all, we all are struggling through something. We all struggle with something, right? I mean, remember Paul, the thorn in his flesh? So there's something that we struggle with, but the greatest thing is, is that we have a family that is going to help us, restore us, and come alongside us and help us. And so I want to see, I want you to see today that what it means to have discipline with the perspective or the purpose of restoration. That's kind of what we are because we know what our identity is. Now we need to know what do we do when things go wrong, okay? So let's see. The first purpose of church restoration, right? Well, what is church restoration? Anybody have an idea real quick, just off the top of your head? So yeah, restoration is really this spiritual um, building up of a fallen member of, the, of, of our family and that Consequently, strengthening of the church, right, in restoration for the glory of God. I mean, if you think about it, everything that we're doing is not just so that, that, that we feel good, but that the Lord would be on display in this place and in your individual life. I mean, it's so specific. We don't have rules and regulations because we want everybody to be perfect. We have rules and regulations because we serve a holy God. And so... We want to know what needs to happen when sin comes in, right? And we want to win those people back into fellowship. I know that you have people in your life, 
in the past that you've seen that fallen away from the church? How did that make you feel? I was bummed. I was really bummed. I, I, had, I had a brother that I was discipling at the time. And man, I got to tell you, it broke my heart. It broke my heart to see him get so entangled in the sin and in the world. And I, and I reached out and I prayed for him and I loved him, but he went his own way. And that's going to happen. But we are on a rescue mission and each and every one of you, and I have to tell you this, you are not only loved by the Lord, but you are loved by the individuals in this room. This is not just a place where you come and hang out and high five people and then leave and see them once a week. We are trying to cultivate a family. We're trying to cultivate something more than just like, hey, I did my church thing for the week, okay? Restoration is, is a part of being integrated in each and everybody's life. And so the purpose of restoration is to love one another and to redeem them back when they start to go away. When he corrects you, for the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you like his own children. Whoever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of our father, of our spirits, and live forever? For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how, but God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in his holiness. No discipline enjoyable is enjoyable while it's happening. It's painful, but afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. So what's the purpose of this verse? What's that? Correction, Correction right? And who, who, who is ultimately administering this correction? Jesus. The Lord Jesus. You all passed. Yes. Right? So we see that God's restoration demonstrates that we're belonging to him. We're his children, Right? I mean, if you have children, do you just let them run wild? I mean, sometimes I do. But you know what I'm saying, right? To the point of where they're going to get out of control and do themselves some harm, right? No. You want to set boundaries for your children, and just like that, so does our Heavenly Father. And He doesn't just do it because He doesn't want us to have fun, but He does it because He loves us. He loves us tremendously. And God, our Father, restores us so that we can have eternal life, right? I mean, that's the whole purpose of the gospel. It was a rescue mission for us. I mean, before we sinned in the garden, Jesus is already on his way. I mean, before the beginning of time. And Jesus didn't get to the cross because he thought, this sounds like a good idea. He did it because he loves us tremendously. I mean, get what the gospel means to you guys, right? I mean, Jesus hangs on the cross and he says, I would rather die than live without you. It's powerful. And so church restoration demonstrates that we have a community that helps us walk this life together. Together. The other thing, too, is that God restores so that we can share in his holiness. That's exactly what this verse says. And the church restoration demonstrates that we, we are a part of this family. You know, I got to tell you, I, I, have, I have family members who I converse with, who I love, who I correct, I give insight to. And then there's family members that don't want any of that. 
Do you know how great my relationship is with the people that I don't do any of that with? Non-existent. Because what I find is that the people that love you are the people that are going to agree with you, but also the people that are going to disagree with you. You don't need a bunch of yes people. You need people that love you enough to disagree with you. And so the ultimate perspective of church restoration is for, that produces peace, righteousness, proper training, and by implementing all these things, it brings us to a true joy. What? Absolutely. Remember what that last verse said? It says, no discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. So I got to tell you, does discipline or restoration, does it hurt? (sighs) Absolutely. Absolutely. But it reaps the fruits of righteousness. Church restoration has two key purposes or two key words that define it pretty well. Something that's wrong, that's going against what God has for us in his word, right? Because, I mean, most of us, if we're doing something wrong, it's either we're willfully doing it wrong or we're ignorantly doing it. (laughs) Most of the time what I find is most Christians are doing it because they don't know. They're ignorant to it. What? And so the other perspective of that is protective. I, as a father, want my children to do the right things because I know that if they continue to down the path of wrong things, it's going to hurt them. And as a father, I want to protect them. And so as a church, haven't you seen people in your life that are going down the wrong path, and what do you want to do? You want to protect them. Why? Because you love them so much. And I want you to hear this. Sometimes we don't think about that because we think of church sometimes as a place where we just kind of hang out. We have this common perspective in which is Jesus. Yay, I love Jesus. I'm going to pray. But you know what happens? We didn't get tightly knit. I want you guys to have, I want you to have dinners with each other. I want you to have family times with each other. I want your kids to play. I want your kids to beat each other up and then you correct in front of each other. You know what I'm saying? I mean, look, on Friday I had, I had dinner with Glenn and Michelle and their wonderful family. And my kids got to beat up their kids and their kids beat up my kids and it was so great. We told them all to knock it off, okay? But that's what it's all about, about being a part of a family, is that we just don't come here to, to just say, thank you, Jesus, and leave. We, we go with a, with a purpose, and that purpose is to live our lives out together. And so... We need to understand that we can only do that when we're actually integrated in each other's lives. When we can, uh, when we can actually be corrective and protective in people's lives, which shows us that we love them.